people used to call Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft, a nerd. He wasn't glamorous like Steve Jobs, the co-founder of Apple Computer. He wasn't a guru like Alan Kay, the pioneer of personal computing. He was just a nerd who dressed badly and talked gobbledygook. Today, Bill Gates is worth around $7 billion. His company, Microsoft, is worth around $27 billion. And the Windows interface is to be found on nine out of every 10 PCs sold throughout the world. Today, if you call Bill a nerd, you do it nicely. Well, the word nerd can be used uh, in a sort of friendly way to say somebody who loves the technology and gets into learning it and even, you know, stays up late playing around with it. That's a positive sense, and that, I, I fit that description. When it's used in a negative way, you know, it's almost like a racial slur uh, that maybe comes about because some of this ang anxiety that people have. Some of that anxiety might come from the fact that Bill Gates isn't content with his Windows system running just a few PCs. He wants it to run the world, spreading like a computer virus into our faxes, our phones, our TV sets, and yes, even our toasters. Television, they once said, was a window on the world. Binary Bill wants to put the world in a window. Computers in their early days uh, were limited to just putting characters in a fixed box and that was it, just characters, because it really uh, there was a structure that made it easy for the computer to do that. And so it was a key element was getting the computers to be fast enough to be able to do all this work of painting things onto a, a totally flexible, what's sometimes called a bitmap screen. They call it that because if you can turn on and off every little dot, uh, that means that you can think of it as a bunch of ones and zeros, a one where it's turned on and it, a zero when it's not. It's easy to forget that just a decade ago, Windows was a joke. In 1984, it wasn't Microsoft that was going to take over the world, it was Apple. Computing was to have a new, friendlier interface, the Macintosh. Windows was Microsoft's attempt to reproduce on cheap, standard machines what Apple had done on its fancy new one. And it wasn't easy. When we shipped it in 1987, the typical PC was still too slow, had too little memory, and there's a problem when you come up with a new system that if you don't get people to do applications, then nobody wants to buy the system. After a couple more cracks at the problem, Microsoft came up with Windows version 3, and with that single digit, it was transformed. And this is what the latest version of Windows 3.1 looks like. You have laid before you what seems to be a fabulous display of all the power that a PC can offer. Documents filled with fancy fonts, spreadsheets that can magically turn dull numbers into colourful charts. You can even have your system talk to you. You have elected to switch to a different application. And you have that buzziest of buzzwords, multimedia, delivering music, animation, sound, and even, given a huge amount of hardware and a following wind, a crude sort of video. Well, Windows, in a certain sense, is a kind of standard. It, it runs on about 90% of all the, the computers that get sold. If you take Windows and Macintosh, those are the two that have enough applications that they're, they're mainstream in, environments. And the, the vast majority of the volume, 90%, uh, is actually on the Windows side. So it's the foundation on which people are building. But there's a cost for all this functionality scratch the surface of any Windows system and you find lurking beneath MS-DOS, the user-hostile operating system that Microsoft developed for the original IBM personal computer a decade ago. A bigger problem is that unlike the Macintosh, which is under the Kremlin-like control of the Central Committee at Apple HQ, Windows has to cope with any hardware that chooses to call itself IBM compatible. The results can be extremely messy. Add a CD-ROM drive from one manufacturer, a sound card from another, a scanner from a third, a high-resolution graphics card off the back of a lorry and a couple of stickers, and you've got a drunk on a bicycle, supremely confident of its rock-solid stability while being liable to crash at any moment. The next version of Windows, codenamed Chicago and due out later this year, will, we're told, solve such problems. 
under the title Microsoft at Work, is destined to become the standard interface for controlling all office equipment, PCs, faxes, phones, printers and pocket computers. Printing complete. For Microsoft, however, perhaps the biggest challenge lies beyond the office and in the home. As mania about the information superhighway builds, as excitement for 500-channel interactive smart TV grows, Microsoft ultimately hopes that it will be its window that opens up this brave new virtual world. And what will you get? I mean, over using the sort of system that you're piloting um, over the next few years. I mean, just what will come out the screen? Okay. <laughs> the, people find it easy to understand. You can look up any movie, see reviews, see what your friends like, have it suggest based on what you liked a movie and see it immediately. Uh, they understand okay, uh, playing like games on the device where you have multiple people playing okay, together and you can see the other people while you play. Uh, they might not appreciate the, you can enhance TV shows and where you have a contest you can bet or where you have baseball you can get additional information, buy tickets, uh, if you have music TV you can buy the CD, find out about the concert or send, a, send in fan mail. Um, you can get government information instead of going and waiting in line or filling out forms, you can do all that right there at your PC. Do you think it's sort of definitely going to happen, or do you think that there's... Oh, absolutely. Why do you think? You think there's the demand out there for this sort of thing? Or do you think it's just there's so much money being put into it by... No, 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 know... no. It's all based on the demand. Um, but I, I, couldn't, I can't use some mathematical proof to, to show you there's demand. It, at the heart of it, there's intuition here. In the same way that we bet our company on Windows, uh, we're betting our future on our vision of the information highway and spending over $100 million a year and putting all of our reputation on the line that there will be a lot of highway activity that's important and that our software will be a, a major part of that. 